What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, I want to dive into and talk about the new season rankings in terms of maybe the top 10 Pokemon that I'm kind of looking at to really utilize more in this new season. Now, I want to make it very clear, a little disclaimer, um, there's so many good options and things are still tentative, right? We don't know the official rankings and where the dust settles until the new season is live in PV Poke updates. But then again, just because something is rank one doesn't mean it can't lose to something rank 100. So these are just Pokemon that I think uh, are going to be fun, going to be strong. It's very nice to see them in the meta. And it kind of shortens this list down to like my top 10 Pokemon that I got my eye on coming up. So let's go ahead and take, I got my list over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at number one. We're going to start from the top going bottom, uh, Claude Sire. Claude Sire has always been strong. Um, it has always been on the fringe of being meta. It's been brought to play Pokemon tournaments and it is now going to shine because of its bulk. It has the, the triple threat when it comes to a great Pokemon that you want to have on your roster. It's got the overall stat product, which is what this is right here, meaning it's very bulky. It can survive a long time. It's got the great move set. So it's got Poison Sting right here, Poison Sting, Stone Edge, uh, Poison Sting, Stone Edge, Earthquake, you have coverage moves for specialty cups, which is great, like Sludge Bomb, or Mega Horn, or Water Pulse. This was a Community Day Pokemon with the Quagsire um, Community Day, as you could get it into Claude Sire. Um, so it's readily available. Lots of people have it. You can easily get access to it. And the meta moveset right now is not Legacy, which is perfect. It's like, it's a beautiful Pokemon to have that doesn't cost you XL, right? Uh, or is not a legendary. I think all of us should be having this built, which is why if all of us are having this built, we're going to see a lot of counters to that, which comes down to my second pick, which is obviously going to be the Feraligators. This got access, for those of you maybe who took a step away, this got access to Shadow Claw. Feraligator went from like rank 400 to top 10 overnight last season because of getting Shadow Claw, and it also has Hydro Cannon and Ice Beam, which is really, it was the season, not last season, but the season before. Um, but Shadow Claw is a beautiful move. You don't necessarily need Ice Beam. Ice Beam's great for the coverage, especially in a meta when we're gonna have Jump Pluffs around a lot, but Crunch is a great alternative too. If you wanna be running this in the Ultra League, you're definitely gonna need to look out for Crunch because there are a lot more Cresselias and Giratinas in that meta along with other psychics and ghosts uh, so for alligator is going to be number two i'm skipping skipping over carbink i'm not doing carbink i'm not gonna walk carbink this season i'm not gonna use it i haven't built one yet because i have <laughs> i always have this happen to me when i take a long time to build an xl pokemon much like you guys by the time I get it built, it gets nerfed because it's been so good for so long, for so long, right? Lickitung was in that same thing. I never thought they would actually nerf Body Slam, and they did. Lickitung is no longer, if we look at here, Lickitung is rank 59 overall, which is still good, right? Top, a top 100 Pokemon is still very much viable depending on the team composition that you have, right? Because they have a purpose on your team. But the fact that Lickitung is worse than Lick Licky, and Lick Licky has better coverage moves, arguably the, the Shadow Ball is better because you do a lot better against um, other ghosts, uh, even though you wall it, right? But you can now basically one-shot it. And you also do well against fighters because of that Shadow Ball. And the fact that Lantern, right? Lick Licky or Lickitung was there to help be a pseudo anchor to uh, Lantern, right? And Lantern's now 65 overall because of the nerf to Surf. Uh, that rhyme didn't try to do that. So I had just finished my Lickitung and then the updates came out and it nerfed. So I'm not gonna go chasing Carbink. A lot of you guys might already have Carbink, by all means use it. But when an XL stays at the top for a long time, much like Metacham, much like Azumarill, they start to get knocked down a bit. Bastiodon even got knocked down. It got Smackdown nerfed just slightly, but Bastiodon's still up here because it, its matchups are so polarizing that it beats 50% of the meta just by standing there and just looking at other Pokemon, right? I'm not chasing after Carbink. Okay, Pokemon number three. So we talked about Clotzer. We talked about Feraligator. We're skipping Carbink. Pokemon number three, I would want to say Gastrodon, 
but what I really love is Dunsparce. Dunsparce previously has been amazing. It's been incredibly strong. It was a great uh, coverage Pokemon. It like it did its job so so well because it has access to Drill Run and Rock Slide. That gives you incredible coverage across the meta, right? You cover stuff like Talonflame and Jumpluff and Mandibuzz and Charge Bug. You also have a great amount of neutral damage or super effective depending on who you're facing off against. Even though you lose against Clonsire, that is a poison type. So it's gonna be taking a lot of damage from Drill Run. So depending on the health and energy and shielding scenarios, there's opportunities there to put down pressure, right? So Dunsparce is uh, very easily making it onto my top 10 roster along with Claude Sire and Feraligator. Now next up, I mean I got my eyes on Mandibuzz, Clefable, Pangoro, Bastion. These are obviously great picks, but my next up is actually going to be Shadow Machamp. I don't think, and mind you, if it's, I'm going to just put this disclaimer out there. If it has a normal, if it's Shadow and has a normal version if you don't have the shadow, right? You you haven't TM'd away frustration. You just don't have it in your in your option, right? In your inventory, um, don't have it as an option in your inventory. I can speak today. Um, normal Machamp will still do okay. I don't want you to be so discouraged. Obviously, Shadow Machamp is going to be better. There's better matchups. There's better damage opportunities there with its charge move. So it's going to edge ahead in some fights, but. Don't make that, don't dis, don't let that discourage you from not using a normal Machamp if that's all you have, right? Use normal Machamp. Same goes with anything else, right? Same with Feraligator, right? Feraligator and Shadow Feraligator are three and four. Like, come on. I have both, right? I have both built, which is great, but that's, that's just all I'm going to say. So if I say a Pokemon and it says Shadow next to it, take that all with a grain of salt. Machamp. Guys. I'm telling you right now, if the numbers come out how we think they're going to be coming out with Karate Chop, Machamp is going to be an absolute monster. Absolute monster. Karate Chop energy gain with Cross Chop and Stone Edge is going to be incredible. Watch out for Payback in the Ultra League because that's going to hit like a truck and uh, Specialty Cups as well. But Machamp is going to be my fighter of choice. Pangoro is higher ranked, but what I foresee with this meta especially with how many dark type Pokemon um, we're having coming up, uh, like Mandibuzz, Malamar, and then the fighters. Pangoro is like Scrafty. It's a fighting dark type Pokemon. So something like Clefable with Charm is going to delete delete it way faster than a Machamp um, because it's just double weak to Fairy. So, and the coverage, the coverage that it has is still great, but what it can't do is put pressure on a Talonflame or on a Jumpluff, right? Remember, Machamp has Stone Edge with a high energy gaining fast move, which now is like, it's deadly, everyone. So I would say in Ultra League, Pangoro would be my go-to because of its typing and its coverage. There's more Giratinas, Cresselias, and stuff like that. Machamp is more Great League. So Machamp's gonna be my fighter of choice. Next up, something that snuck up on me that I think is very cool is Malamar is making it to number 12 overall. That is with the Psy Wave fast move, which is going to be a very high energy gaining fast move that you'll be able to TM away at the start of the new season. And it has superpower and foul play. Now, Malamar is a dark psychic type, which is really unique because it's only double weak to bug. And there's not a lot of top meta bug type Pokemon. And even if they are bug, right? So a charge a bug, for example, their fast move is not bug typing. It's Volt Switch or Gavantula with Lunge, right? It's Volt Switch. It's pretty rare to find a bug bug fast move user that's going to be around the top meta which is why i think malamar has a great opportunity you have superpower and foul play that's great coverage right because superpower is double resisted uh, by ghosts and you know it resisted by a couple other typings foul play can help do neutral or super effective to those which is really really cool so i'm going to be adding malamar onto my roster as a pokemon to have in the top 10 to look out for um, next, we're going to scroll down a bit. I would love to put Marowak here, right? Don't fade on Marowak, 
But one that we need to really talk about is Jumpluff. This is going to be both normal and the shadow. As you can see, they're pretty similar in rating. I don't have shadow. I have normal. So that's what I'll be using. But it's still strong nonetheless. And you actually have a lot of uh, variety here in terms of your coverage. But what's great is... It can beat the water type Pokemon that you typically see and the Mud Boys. It can beat the Fighters. It can beat uh, something like Wigglytuff and a Mandibuzz, which is really cool. And it also has, I know it says Aerial Ace as a fast move, or a charge move, I should say. You want Fairy Wind, Fast Move, um, Fairy Wind, Aerial Ace, Energy Ball. Uh, that's going to be the combo. But Acrobatics as well hits like a truck. And the reason why Jumpluff hasn't been very good i mean it's been good don't get me wrong but it's not been meta is because of pokemon like skarmory skarmory has been around for so long and it got stealing and sky attack nerfed with this season so it's gone like skarmory let's see where it ended up skarmory's one skarmory's 120 that's how skarmory's gone right you're gonna be seeing far more mandibuzz and uh jump luffs and Talon Flames in your sets, then you will be seeing Skarmory again, which is which gives room for Jumpluff to do well because now you're doing neutral damage in those situations with your flying type charge. We also have super effective uh, fast move against Mandibuzz. So Jumpluff is gonna be huge. It's a pretty big investment because you have to power it up, but it doesn't need to be XL, but it's still gonna cost a lot. Just fair warning right there. Um, next up, uh, this is probably one of my one of my favorite Pokemon to get updated and that is going to be Licky Licky This is going to be similar to Dunsparce. We go ahead and take a look at normal uh, Normal here um, This is going to be similar to Dunsparce It got access to rollout and rollout got updated in terms of the damage that it can do Now what Lick Licky has is even though it does have the legacy body slam, which is legacy I want you guys to know that you have to elite TM uh, that in order to get it, but it also has coverage charge moves pick your boom as I like to say now Typically you want to run with shadow ball and body slam uh, But what you have here is a unique opportunity to go with something like earthquake or solar beam to catch people off guard Depending on the meta now shadow ball is going to be most likely your go-to and what's great as well is if it resists shadow ball most likely rollout and body slam are doing neutral damage anyways um, and with its bulk as well, it's still pretty bulky. If we look at overall stat product, 2112, whereas uh, Licky Tongue was 2283. That's still a decent ways off, but it's not something so crazy that it makes Licky Licky feel like a glass cannon, right? It's not at all. It's still relatively bulky. And with that Shadow Ball, you're going to be doing pretty well. And Rollout is just great because now Rollout, you could, you could be having a positive matchup or positive super effective damage against stuff like Mandibuzz, Talonflame, and Jumpluff while having that Shadow Ball for some of those ghosts or to hit a Shadow Machamp, right? It's going to do a lot of damage. Okay, so that was Lickitung. Let's go ahead and go down. Um, next up is a Pokemon that I have always loved. It's probably been one of easily my top three safe swaps of all time if not arguably number one, and that's Drapion, both normal and shadow. Um, shadow uh, edges out a bit more in terms of the matchups. These are simulations, right? But Drapion is such a beautiful Pokemon to have because of how spammy it is. And you guys got to remember this new season has an update where the switched clock is going to be moving from 60 to 50 seconds. And if you have a Pokemon that is a safe swap that has the Aqua Tail Poison Sting combination, which is incredibly spammy, you're going to be able to bail back out of that matchup relatively quickly, especially if your opponent takes a while to swap back in. You could really capitalize on that while keeping Drapion alive, which is really cool. Now, with being a poison typing, you obviously have to watch out for ground type moves. So the new Gastrodon with Mud Slap is going to hurt, uh, but you can still do... Uh, some decent neutral damage there with Crunch or Aqua Tail, which is going to be great. You have great coverages anyways across the meta um, with the rise of more fairy type Pokemon like Clefable and Wigglytuff in this meta. You have that uh, super effective damage with Poison Sting, the potential, right? Sludge Bomb. Like just because it says Crunch 
doesn't mean you can't sludge bomb a Wigglytuff, okay? Some of y'all are gonna do that. You guys are gonna go sludge bomb and just nuke a Wigglytuff that thinks they're safe because they think it's an Aqua Tail. Just saying. So Drapion is one of those Pokemon you definitely want to have on your roster. Um, let's see, that is... We're getting close. Uh, where did the Drapion go? So Drapion's here. Uh, we talked about the Jumpluff and the Machamp. These are the normals. They're just slightly down. Next is going to be Aurorus. And I think this is like a great wild card pick because of its core breaking opportunities. You got to guys, guys got to understand this thing hits like a truck. And now with the num the top flyers being double super effective, uh, much like Jumpluff, right? Powder Snow and Weather Ball Ice is going to destroy Jumpluffs. And Meteor Beam... I don't know if y'all have been hit by a meter beam or used it. It doesn't matter if it's resisted. Aurorus can do a ton of damage. And I want to show you guys. This is a Shadow Machamp here. Obviously, Shadow Machamp is going to delete Aurorus. But there will be opportunities, especially if you put this Pokemon on your roster, where you could potentially land a meteor beam. It all depends on shielding scenarios. It does 66% right? That's resisted. Weather Ball does 49%. I know like Weather Ball is more energy efficient, but there are going to be opportunities where you might just be able to nuke something. That's resisted damage, right? Weather Ball is neutral. That's 50% of its health. Like I'm telling you guys in Aurorus, think of this situation. Um, a Jump Pluff, uh, you get to farm it down. Somehow you got switch alignment, you're locked into it and you get to farm down a Jump Pluff and their counter is a Machamp, but you have two Weather Balls locked and loaded. That means the Machamp is going to have to give up two shields in order to survive. That's a lot of advantage that you can gain with Aurorus. And it can also do well against Talonflame. It can also do well against Clodsire. I think having the Jumpluff Clodsire core is going to be very common or Mandibuzz Clodsire to have that neutral coverage play with each other uh, because Mandibuzz being weak to Fairy, Clodsire being Poison, Jumpluff being, or Clodsire being weak to ground water, Jumpluff being a flying grass. You guys can see that literally could be an ABB, ABB team. Um, Aurorus completely core breaks that apart and you can do a ton of neutral damage to everything else when you have that energy gain. So Aurorus is like my wild card pick uh, because of its utility against the meta that we have been talking about already. All right, next up, scroll down a bit, scrolling down. Here he is, Shadow Alolan Marowak. Got an update to Fire Spin uh, again. Uh, got an update to Bone Club. Bone Club is now not a trash move. It is actually very, very good. And you're going to want the legacy charge move of, uh, of Shadow Bone here. So as you guys can see with the asterisk there, it is going to be legacy. Uh, it is worth it. If you, if you don't have any elite TMs and whatnot, Shadow Ball is going to be your go-to. Uh, but Shadow Bone is just strictly better. So I would recommend that. Uh, the reason why is because this is the greatest Pokemon of all time. I don't care what you're using against me. I will find ways to utilize Alolan Marowak to my advantage to win. That's just how I use Alolan Marowak. I can guarantee you there is going to be a rise, uh, a comeback in the uh, Azumarill Double Ghost, which might be Azumarill, Alolan Marowak, and Skeletors, or Sableye, or Skeletors and Sableye, um, which is where Clodsire could have a bit of fun, but again, Clodsire has to watch out for Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, a lot of the neutral moves with Shadow Ball and Shadow Bone and Bone Club. Um, so yeah, Alolan Marowak is making it onto my top 10 roster this season because of its updates that it got, like Bone Club. It's, it's been so bad for so long, I cannot not have Alolan Marowak on my top 10 roster. Okay. And finally, I think this is the final one. Let me check. Yeah. Final one is going to be Galarian Weezing. Um, Galarian Weezing. This is, this is interesting. Galarian Weezing has really capitalized in special cup metas in the past. It really hasn't come to the forefront of open Great League, but I think there is a great opportunity for it now because of what it can do in terms of core breaking. So, stuff like a Mandibuzz Shadow Machamp or a Jumpluff Shadow Machamp, Weezing can core break that because of its moveset. And even then, right, Brutal Swing got an update. Even then, it has access to Overheat. 
just because the meta says use play rough doesn't mean an overheat isn't going to obliterate a jump fluff, right? This matchup here um, is utilizing brutal swing and play rough, right? Play rough doing 35% uh, brutal swing doing 18%. If we change this to overheat and your opponent thinks you're just running a play rough brutal swing meta uh, move, you're doing 67% right? That's going to hit really, really hard. You win all the shielding scenarios like this. Uh, Galarian Weezing is a Pokemon you guys need to be very careful about with its updates that I got access to and what it can do against this meta. So those are my top 10. Um, I think uh, obviously there's, there's a lot of great Pokemon here. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think you guys will have a lot of fun with these things, but those are just my thoughts going into this. If I was to go right, these are the ten Pokemon I'm gonna kind of bring um, the first first like week and kind of try to find a team out of this this roster. Right, they can be very strong. These are the kind of Pokemon I'm looking at. Obviously, you guys can swap things around if you want to. I'm not I'm not the final verdict. This is what I want to try to have fun with new stuff. Right, uh, Dunsparce being updated and new, Machampion updated and new. Um, we got the, uh, let me have a look over here on my list, uh, the Aurorus, uh, the, the Shadow Alolan Marowak. Clawsire is just the same thing, but it's just it's just good now. Uh, but yeah, overall, let me know what you guys think, right? What, what picks would you add in here? Do you guys agree with me with the carving thing? Just like leave it until it goes away someday. Because um, as you can see, there's not a lot of XL Pokemon up here. There's Bastidon, there's Carbink, and there's Azumarill. And then there's Dickersby. That's four in the top 25. It used to be a lot more than that. So that's a good thing overall. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. The new season is starting very shortly. And uh, like always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.